course, I've always wanted to go to Cuba after all. I'm a socialist, and it's a socialist uh, country ever since the revolution. And I mean, who could ever forget the Che Guevara's and the Fidel Castro's coming across these mountains with their wee hats on? How would you like to go where nights are so romantic? Where the stars are dancing, rumbas in the sky, yeah, 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 yeah. If you'd like to spend the weekend in Havana, you better pack up all your summer clothes. I see you down at Slapsy Joe's. So long, boy, and cheap, hi, hi, Havana. like Latin dancing, loved drumbas, tangos, cha-cha, you name it. See, it goes right away back to the 30s, to the days of the depression, and dancing was a kind of form of escapism then, and everybody went to dancing, and we loved it, we just really went mad about ballroom dancing, particularly Latin American dancing. We never went much to the big dance halls, because the big dance halls were a wee bit kind of snooty, the toffs went there. The, the good dancers, they went to the wee dives and dens, and that's where we went. We used to go to one called The Tripe, it was a shop, and that was quite a funny place to go. I think it was called The Tripe because it was a shop one time that sold tripe, and the tripe just stuck to it. I'm sure it was about here somewhere, it was a, a, a shop, something like this, you know, just next to the gobbles, and there was a wee dance hall. And you used to get in, and we got in for a penny. And the, it was that wee that the band was stuck up in the corner. And each side of the, the, the road here, there was all sorts of wee dance halls, like the, the Gordon and the Stanley and the Lido and the Hibs. You name it, there was hundreds of wee dance halls all over Glasgow. And they were all smashing dancers. <laughs> Right, basic rumba steps, commencing handshake hold, and a forward basic, a la mana, Turkish towel, bring your partner across to the other side, and a New York. Oh, I still go dancing, I go to Pollock on a Monday night to the modern sequence of ballroom dancing. Uh, it's very good, spend a lot of time there, but of course I spend a lot of time at meetings as well because I still go to a lot of political meetings because politics has been right through my whole life. I mean, I left school at 14 and discovered right away the inequalities and injustices against the ordinary working class people. And therefore, right away with a socialist background I had, I was really ready to get into the sort of battles. In the next 40 years, I was in the factories defending women's rights. In the middle of all this, I was still in the dancing, going to dancing. We loved the beat, we loved the rhythm of the whole thing. I mean, you could move your body, every bone, every muscle in your body could go to this. Somehow I think it was connected with the Glasgow psyche, you know, with the working people of Glasgow. And in Glasgow there's a resilience. It doesn't matter what happens, you keep popping up again and you keep fighting back. And I'll tell you something, you certainly needed that work in the factory because you had to have a thick skin in order to fight for your rights. Oh, there's the picture. That's a picture of one of our big campaigns for equal pay for equal work. That's, that's me with all my mates in the Rolls Royce factory. That was one of our big campaigns at that time. Uh, you know, all we did was fight for higher wages and equal pay for work of equal value. And that battle's still going on yet in many ways. I was a member of the Communist Party at that time because everybody was a member of the Communist Party at that time. It was a natural thing. And at that time, that was a party that was helping, certainly helping the women. 
and they stood by the women, supported the women all along the line. And for that reason, when somebody says to me, you're going to join the Communist Party, I'm not going to say no if they're out there helping us to get decent wages and conditions. Th th this type of dress is good for the dance that we do now. And the, the modern rumba that we do now, it's a wee bit different from the rumba we used to do when I was young, before the war. But the rumba they do now is very, very slow. You see, it's, um, it's, um, it's very slow. They move slow and they do this kind of thing all the time, you see. And the hands go like this, you know, and then they go like this. And this is the way they pose. When I was young, you just rumbled away like this. You know, you sugared the boot and you sugared the boot. That was the way you, you sort of carried on. The only thing is, the likes of this one is great for the rumba dancing because I'll tell you how, it's got a nice skirt and if you're sugaring around like this, it, it gives a lovely sway. And the whole thing swings up and down, you know. And it's great fun stroking, splashing off your skirts. You see, and this particular one's got a skirt under it, which makes it even better. But that's the kind of things that we do, they do nowadays. But it's nothing to what we did before, nothing to what we did, you know, in the days of the George Raft kind of thing. <laughs> See, I think that the fast rumba was greatly influenced with the Hollywood films in their days. You know, uh, prior to the war, we seen more Hollywood films than we did British films, and we could understand the American accent. So we used to go to the pictures, as we called it, and we used to see Carmen Miranda, and there was Carmen with her hips shaking and a basket of flowers up here, giving it big licks. These were the, the sort of things that I think influenced in my young days. It was certainly much quicker than, than we're doing it well, today. Well, I can remember years ago when it was Edmundo Ross. I thought Edmundo Ross done an awful lot for, for Latin rhythms in this country. Mm -hmm. And when he played the rumba, he always played fast rumbas. He played all sorts of different Latin rhythms. But I can always remember him as a fast rumba. <laughs> isn't Havana because I don't know I said I don't know whether to take this and whether to take this other, the other dress I've got somehow I imagine this is kind of Havana-ish isn't it it's kind of Havana looking Would you like to see the Caribbean shore? Come on around away over Sunday, where the view and the music is tropical. You'll hurry back to your office on Monday, but you won't be the same anymore. How would you like to go where nights are so romantic? Where the stars are dancing, rumbas in the sky. Hi, hi, if you do like. To spend the weekend in Havana, you better pack up on your summer coat. I see you down a flapsy joint. So long, boy, and chip a high Havana. Well, I'm here to find the roots of the rumba, so I'm a, I think my first stop will be Rumba Saturday, because this is apparently where the people go to do the rumba and do their afternoon's enjoyment. So that'll be my first stop. Ooh, come on around away over Sunday Where the view and the music is tropical You'll hurry back to your office on Monday But you won't be the same anymore How would you like to go La rumba es un baile típicamente cubano que forma parte de la gran familia de bailes afroamericanos. 
existen diferentes estilos. La rumba es atípica al cubano dance, por which ejemplo, comes from the great family of African dances. Que es un baile de suelta, There are different de styles of rumba. Suaves, we have the yambu, which is where a couple dance with a smooth and rhythmic movement. Then we have the guaguanco, which is also a dance for a couple, but with a much faster rhythm where the flirting relationship between the couple is expressed more strongly. In general, the rumba is a dance for a couple, where the woman flirts with the man, she provokes him, he escapes, and then he shows his interest by coming closer again. The roots of these dances came to Cuba in the 19th century and were then mixed with the elements of the Spanish colonial culture. So, the rumba is sung in Spanish. I don't know. I, I, I'm surprised when I found the rumba here. Really surprised because I've never ever saw that rumba done like that. And it's got this story associated with it. You know, this background associated with it. It's certainly quite exciting. I'm no doubt about that. You've seen the people how excited they were and how they were enjoying for lessons next. I'm going to go and see if I can pick this up. Whether I'll ever be able to pick up this hip movement, I don't know, because it's something that seems to be unique to the Cubans. But we might be able to do it. I'll certainly go and have a go anyway. to a dance school in Havana and we started the morning learning the steps of a Cuban dance called Sewing. Well, now we're going to learn the main step in Sewing that is the same step we're going to do in Salsa. The difference is the accent with the music. If we do Sewing, a specific step, we do the same step for salsa, but the different aspect that give the music. So, there's another difference also that I didn't tell you before. And it is that when we dance song, we don't do, come please Sabina for a moment. We don't do all this. This is only for salsa, all this tonic that we do. But for song, and yes please. For song, the step is out, 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 out. So all the turning. The turnings we do in salsa, we don't do in sun. Sun is more conservative. Huh? So let's do now the movement. Stay here, please. Stay here. With sun only and the music. Piano maestro. The rumba, as I find it here, has no relationship at all to the rumba that we experienced at home. At the beginning, the first session of the class, I can see some resemblance to the old Hollywood rumba. It was relatively easy. I was able to pick it up quite easy because it, it, the steps were similar to some of the dancing we do at home. And it was, it was quite easy. It was good. It was very enjoyable, especially the teacher, because he's a beautiful dancer. It was a sheer pleasure dancing with him. The other, the other kind of dancing was entirely different. You're into a completely different ball game. You know, this rumba. This rumba is really, I've never seen a rumba like it. I'm quite sure when we go back with this, 
Nobody will believe it's a number. But the number was quite funny because, first of all, you had to stick your posterior out, you see, and you had to keep your knees bent the whole time, and you had to move very much, and you had to get the hips going, the hips had to go the whole time, shoulders had to go at some time. It was very difficult. It was very, very African orientated. You'd actually think you were in Africa, any part of Africa. It's obviously a kind of a culture of the African people. In fact, the teacher, kind of, I had a wee compliment, which I'm quite pleased about. She says that I was picking it up quite well for a, a different culture. One, two, one, two. To the hips, to the hips. Two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You have to flex your legs and the torso is a little bit forward. This is woman go now. It is a little bit faster than jambu that we were doing. And something specific in this dancing is that man attacks the woman and she has to hide. She has to be always aware of his attack. Huh? So she can use this covering with any part of the body, with the hand, with the skirt, turning, you see, anything. So let's see this. You dance normally the same main step. Pop, 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 it's a courting session that's going on, and he's trying to grab you, and you've got to dodge him. You're also watching the guy, and watching that he doesn't catch you, because you've got to see you don't get caught. That's it, and start it, go. Again. And I looked at him every time, I looked at him and he looked at me. I could have started giggling, you know, and it was quite funny. And he responded to this. He saw the funny side of it as well. He started giggling as well. The result is when he tried to catch me, I wasn't having any. Brad, don't be afraid. You have more... Huh? Come on. Ba, ba. Ba, ba. The Tropicana is a cabaret that was left over from the old Mafia days. Now this was when America was backing the corrupt Batista government in Havana. And it was before the 1959 revolution and before Fidel Castro kicked the Mafia out. You have to see a cabaret like Tropicana. It's like, a, to me, it's like a museum. I mean, I find it a museum from the 1950s, 1940s. I mean, the big age of Copacabana, of Tropicana, another age. The show takes me back to the, the old Hollywood days of Carmen Miranda and George Raff doing the rumba, and that was where we learned our rumba. Now, is that how you see the rumba? Is it? No, no, uh, rumba for us is something very, very different. Oh, okay. Uh, you have seen the folklore rumba uh, took place in another context, it was in another place. But uh, the, the people from Hollywood, they came here and then they, they saw what rumba had as possibilities, as dance, as music, how strong it was. They took the steps from the song, they took the clothes from the carnival, the whole choreography from the carnival, and then they took some little things from rumba, and they called it rumba. Does that mean that all those years that I've been dancing the rumba and shuggling about, it wasn't the rumba I was dancing at all? No, 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 you were dancing song. Oh. But song became, in the, in the middle of the present century to the Cuban, the most important dance oh. form. But uh, the, the Hollywood people that came here to Cuba, they, they just put the name rumba to it. They said it was rumba and that's the way it came to Europe. So you were really dancing Cuban song, but you called it rumba. I felt that the Tropicana had no relation to the Cuban people at all. It was a real commercialization of the culture. What I really wanted to see was the ordinary people dancing rumba. So I went to a working class district in Havana called Keo Hueso, 
where Fidel Castro first started his political career. Castro's aims at that time were to get rid of the corruption and to create a better life for the ordinary people of Cuba, and that was why the revolution took place. We met a lawyer who took me into a back street rumba party. It was like a jam session and there was a lawyer who is not only a bricky and didn't only fight in the Sierra Maestro, but he's also a poet and a writer. The rumba was born out of slavery. It was the different tribes that were brought over from Africa, mainly Nigeria, where while they were being sold as slaves, they maintained their own dance, their own song, and hold on to their own culture and their own identity. And this is a, where it really started, the beginnings of the whole rumba, and the sort of back streets at Old Havana. Now, try and make some kind of comparison with the rumba you've seen today and the rumba you've seen in the, the rumba Saturday, where it was much more dignified and much more like what we do at home. But this is really the real McCoy, and this is where it all happened. And you'll notice that people, there isn't just a set piece of dancing. They just get up and they dance and they talk to each other and they communicate with each other with dance, in fact, with their hips. So that is a real rumba you've experienced. We went to meet the pensioners and that was the biggest surprise of the lot because there they were at nine o'clock in the morning out in the sun doing all their exercises and worse still they invited me to do the exercises along with them which nearly killed me. But the whole purpose of the exercises was sort of preventative medicine which was part of the policy of the government. There's a very good community spirit there which we seem to have lost here in Glasgow. Well, when I saw their faces, when I looked at their faces, I could see the sincerity in it and the commitment in them. And I was really quite touched with it. And I certainly admired their resilience. First of all, I would like to <clears throat> say gracias. Thank you very much. Ante todo, quiero darle las gracias. Muy agradecido estoy. Gracias. Muchas gracias. And I, I, I see by your age group the same as me. Eh, yo estoy mirando la edad de ustedes que es la misma que la mía. You have confused... <laughs> you have come through the revolution and I'm sure you, of all people, must be very, very proud of your revolution. And I must say a word about the women. The women are very important and can play a very important role. And we women must never let up. Always stand by our rights. Here, 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 here.
I found out the situation in Cuba was quite, Cuba was quite drastic. Uh, for instance, they're rationed very, very tightly. It's only one roll a day for each person. And one shop we went to, it was only beans that were for sale. I met a woman called Elena, and she was a lovely person. She was a woman, she was 76 years old and had been a teacher. And she'd also uh, helped Che Guevara during the revolution. And her and I went shopping and we discovered they had any things like uh, soap, toothpaste, washing powder, and the wee day-to-day -day things that we just take for granted, they just didn't have them. They've got a tremendous problem because when the revolution took place, about 70% of their trade was done by the USA. And of course that was stopped right away, so they had to then turn to Eastern Europe where they got a battering system going. And the Russians supplied them with oil and they supplied the Russians with sugar, which was okay. But of course, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, the oil into the country collapsed and that stopped practically everything. So you can imagine the situation that they're in. And they're struggling, they're really struggling hard. We are not going to be like this forever and we hope to get over it. There are people who are helping us, so hopefully we can beat it soon. With your help and the help of everyone else. The revolution actually hasn't been able to come up to all its promises. They've been unable to deliver because we're now living in a consumer society. A lot of things are available that weren't available even 30 years ago. There's the televisions, there's computers, there's videos, all these things that are attracted to young people and they don't have access to it. Mind you, where young people can see it in Britain and don't have access to it because they don't have the money. And in spite of all this, when you see them and you speak to them and you dance with them, and every adversity, the dance in November always comes through. By this time I'd realised there was something more to this rumba than just dancing. And the Matanzas are a semi-professional group of the real sort of rumba dancers. And we went there to watch them performing. They were really quite wonderful and then they invited us to their home and I wanted to go to their home because I wanted to show off what I had learned in the rumba and see what they thought about it. Vivian, I've been taking some rumba lessons and I would like you to tell me if they're okay. I'll show you the steps. Now, I had to... That, that was one. Sí, como no, puede And, ser. Hmm. Puede ser así. La rumba se, se comienza marcando, ¿no? Lo mismo. Ahí. <laughs> La rumba tiene gran importancia well, para mí. The rumba is very important to me. Since I was born, I have been brought up with it. It is in my heart. When I was five years old, my father told me that I had to dance the rumba in the festival. I said that if he bought me a new dress, I would, and that's how it happened. He ordered a dress to be made for me, and I danced the rumba on the stage. I really think that the rumba is a huge part of my life. Some of the original members of the group have died, but the younger ones are keeping the lively image going, which is very important. At least, it is for me. These youngsters have already made it to the top.
Actually, the difference between the Monaquitas and the Tropicana was nobody's business. It appeared as though the Tropicanas had really commercialised their culture, whereas the Monaquitas were trying to hold on to the real culture and display it in that way. So there was a big, big difference. It's just the two of them just didn't meet. Back in Havana in the park, we met a local man, Orlando, who's a famous rumba dancer. When we dance, we really let ourselves go. When the dancer is dancing, he feels Cubano. He feels the meaning of the rumba and open his heart to the people, to the world. You are born with that feeling, that something inside telling you what to do. It is not a mechanical thing, no, 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 no. It is a pure emotion, a feeling that we have just to express. In Cuba, we have the rumba and the sun. Each country has its own tradition, in the way the Spanish have the flamenco, for example. So it is very important for a country not to lose its own traditions and identity, which will convey your own image to the world. This is a tremendous demonstration representing the national hero, Jose Martin. This hero liberated the Cubans from the Spanish 140 years ago, and 40 years ago, Fidel Castro led a protest demonstration down the steps of the university. And tonight they're celebrating 40 years of this. I was invited to the march uh, by the pensioners, and really, when I saw the march, I was absolutely amazed. I'd never seen anything like it. And you know, when I looked at it, it was a story of my life, because I've been in hundreds of marches, but never anything the size of this. The difference between the Batista regime and this revolution was the people that sell created this revolution, and they created it because they want to maintain their spirit of independence. And no way can I see them going back to anything like Batista. But somewhere along the line, it's going to have to change where they can maintain their independence and their identity. When I was watching the march, and I was watching the faces going by, the faces were so proud. And I looked at what they've been through, even under the present regime, because of the blockade and all the other things that are happening to them, I really felt they've had a real tough time. Well, you've got to get the chicken in the pot. I came here looking for the rumba, and I discovered that it was a lot more than just music and dance. It was a, a reflection of the people's independence, it was their spirit, and it was their way of life and their culture. When I remember the people that I met, I realised how much the rumba was part of the revolution. It was their culture, nobody else's culture, and it was their country and nobody else's country, and no way were they going to let anybody dominate them. How they'll survive, I don't know. But the Rumba's a dance that brings people together. It has done in the past, and I'm sure it will now, because it's full of joy, full of happiness, full of hope. They're still dancing. <laughs>